let's play in tongues Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When we pray in the spirit, Lord, we are being edified, made strong in the inner man. Thank you, God. You know, you might be feeling drained, you might be feeling weak this morning, uh, but as you pray in the Holy Spirit, as you pray in tongues, you know, you are being refreshed. We are being strengthened in the inner man. And good things are happening. You know, fear is being removed. Faith is coming in. Anxiety is going out and joy is being poured in because it's the prayer of the Holy Spirit. In the presence of of the Holy Spirit. There's freedom and liberty. In the presence of God, there is joy. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Ghost. So just go ahead and just pray with confidence, right? Just pray with um, boldness, pray with confidence. Uh, let your focus be on God. Let your focus be on Him and say, Lord, what you want me to do, God, and what you want to do in me, God, you do it. For those of you who have not yet started you know, praying in the Holy Spirit, you know, maybe you can just ask and say, Lord, you fill me, and I just want to take a step of faith and pray out. And uh, whatever those words that uh, God is putting in your heart, Right? Whatever syllables that the Spirit is putting in your heart, Spirit of God is putting in your heart, those sounds, you know, you make those sounds. Words are just sounds, right? And uh, sometimes these words, yeah, it doesn't have any meaning when we pray in tongues. But uh, the, the, the Word of God declares, Paul says that uh, when I pray in a tongue, my understanding is unfruitful. Right? Uh, so he doesn't understand, but he prays it out in faith. So it could be like that. It could be a sound. So go ahead and, and speak out. You know, Give voice to that sound that you feel the urge in your spirit. Right? Just go ahead. Let's, let's just take one more minute to do this. You know, the morning devotion, uh, Karen was sharing about the rich man who went away sorrowful because he had a lot of possessions and, uh, he, you know, he, he didn't want to give up, right? Um, but maybe the Lord uh, is giving us strength to give up, right? Giving us strength to give up. And that happens when we pray in the Spirit. So let's just pray. Maybe you're saying, I don't have the strength to give up. Well, the Lord will give you the strength to give up some of those things that you need to give up, right? And so, yeah, let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this day. Master, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for the indwelling presence of your Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you for this wonderful gift, O oh God, of praying in tongues. And Lord, we thank you for all that you bring into our lives, Father God. We thank you for the strength that you bring in. We thank you for those things that you remove, take out of our lives, O oh God. And uh, we just want to thank you for the anointing, Lord, of your Holy Spirit, O oh Master. We thank you for empowering us by your Spirit, God, to live for you, Father God. We thank you for everything, life transformation that happens because of your work in our lives, oh Father God. We thank you that you are Emmanuel, God with us by your spirit, oh God. And um, yes, Master, we just commit this day, we commit this time into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Right. Um, let's, um, let's pick up from where we uh, stopped last class. Um, we've been looking at... Um, the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the Lord Jesus, right? That's what we stopped um, last time. So um, we looked at um, the work of the Holy Spirit just before, right? Or at the time the Lord Jesus um, came in or he was born, right? Do you remember that? 
was that this uh, that's something that we saw right what happened when uh the, the events of the lord jesus being before he was being born what the holy spirit did, did you know in the lives of those people and then we looked at the whole life the work of the holy spirit in the life of jesus right um and uh, how he was led by the spirit into the wilderness and to overcome the temptation of the enemy right uh, a temptation of the devil so he did that and then he came in the power of the holy spirit and he, he started his ministry earthly ministry in the power of the holy spirit that's what he did right okay so today uh, we're going to just continue with um, the, uh, the you know you, but do you remember one one important thing that we studied last night last class we ended with that what is that anyone one very important truth um we ended with that what was that okay yeah so when um and um, yeah so what you're saying is, is that he kept aside certain things and then he walked in the power of the Holy Spirit as a man when he ministered on the earth. And which passage did we study? Which verse did we look at? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, is everyone going back and reading the notes? No? Hey, you need to do that. Okay, you really need to do that. Um, go back after you finish the class, the same day read it you know if you have questions right there you need to do that okay so we looked at one greek word okay kenosis right and um kenuo which means that he emptied himself okay and the and the scripture portion that we saw was philippians chapter 2 right philippians chapter 2 and um, it talks about how the lord jesus emptied himself and he though he was um, let's let's read that right um Philippians 2 and uh, verse 7, sorry, 6 and 7, right? Who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. Okay, and that, um, that the word there refers to the fact, refers to an emptying of oneself. Okay, and we looked at several other scripture where the Lord Jesus talks about how he left the glory that he had with the Father at the time of creation. Okay, So we, we need to understand one thing that is very important is the Lord Jesus, he, he is God. He was God when he walked on the earth. right? But the things that he did when he ministered, right, he did as man empowered by the holy spirit okay there's a difference right he he is deity not for a second was he not god right but the thing that he thinks that he did he walked in the glory you know we use that word glory which meant uh, you know the greek word doxa what is so what does glory mean who god is and what he does Right, so a uh, making apparent, a manifestation, okay, a display of who God is and what He does. That is glory, right? So the Holy Spirit in Him glorified or manifest. He walked in the glory of the Son. Okay, we looked at uh, John um, uh, three scriptures in John. Okay, uh, let's let's just go there. Um, Okay, John 1 and verse 14. Okay, John chapter 1, verse 14. Can somebody read that? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So he says, and we beheld his glory. So what, what is John saying? We saw his glory. Okay, we saw who he was, we saw what he did. We beheld his glory. The glory 
as of the only begotten of the Father, which means the glory of the Son we saw. Okay. Then another another verse that we can look at is John chapter 17. Okay, John chapter 17 and verse 5. 17 and verse 5 says, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Now, who says these words? The Lord Jesus. So he's, he's, he's revealing a very important truth here, even as he's praying to the Father. And uh, John records that, and he says, this is what it is, that um, the Lord is saying, Lord, now you glorify me with the glory that I had with you uh, even before the world began. Okay, so he's talking about his deity, and he's also talking about the glory which he, which he had. So which means that in on earth, when he walked, when he preached, when he taught, when he did the things that he did, he walked in a certain different kind of glory, which we call, we can call as sonship glory. You know, because it says, John chapter 1, verse 14 says, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Meaning, as the as the son, right? Uh, the same chapter, verse twenty-two. Okay, what does it say? And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. So he's saying, okay, this glory. Now I am giving to. I'm giving them, meaning, his disciples, his followers. The same kind of glory who I wore, who I you know, walked in, and the and the power that I walked in, I'm giving them, so that they may be one. They might they might be uni united, okay. And uh, just as we are one, he says something amazing, right? Okay, so let's move on. Um, what did the apostles and what did the Lord Jesus Himself say about His ministry and how He did what He did? Etc. Okay, let's look at Luke chapter 4. Okay, Luke 4. And um, yeah, verse, verses 17, 18. Luke chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. Okay, Luke chapter 4, maybe we'll, um, yeah, 17, 8, 17 to 21 actually, we can read it. So this is what the Lord says, right? He, uh, Lord did. Uh, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he was when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, "The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are." oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 20, then he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Okay, so he's, uh, this was a prophetic uh, scripture from the book of Isaiah that he read out. Okay. What does the verse say? Verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Okay, so he's talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. He's saying work of the, uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me. And he lists down all the other things, all the things. It's like a job description. Like when you when you join a company uh, or you know a place of work, uh, they'll give you, you know, in your uh, appointment letter. Okay, this is your job description. This is what you need to do. You know, this is what the, you know. These are the things that your job involves. Your work involves. Right? It's like his job description. He's just reading it. You know, he's reading it. He's saying he's anointed me to do all these: to preach the gospel, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty, the recovery of sight to the blind. Uh, proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and, and and then he closes the book, gives it back, and he says, "Today, this is fulfilled in your hearing." Okay, so he's saying, "I've been anointed by the Holy Spirit to do this. Right? The, the Spirit of God is upon me, and I'm going to do this." Okay, so we, the Lord Jesus Himself, talks about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
He says, I'm going to do this because of the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Um, now, these are important things because we're going to talk about something at the end of it. Um, so let's, um, let's just continue, right? Matthew 12, verse 28. Matthew 12 and verse 28. The Lord is saying, this is immediately after he casts out um, the... Yeah, the uh, the demon out of the person who was blind and mute. Okay, this person was blind. He could not see. He was mute. He could not speak. Okay, he could not see. He could not speak. And the Lord ministered, and uh, he cast out the demon. Matthew twelve. Okay, so what is he saying? He's saying here, um, Matthew twelve and verse twenty eight. Right. If I cast out demons, then he explains how by the Spirit of God. Surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. How is he casting out demons? By the Spirit of God, which means by the work of the Holy Spirit, by the empowering work of the Holy Spirit. So he's saying, if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come over you. The rule and reign of the Lord, his kingdom has come upon you. Okay, so again, the words of the Lord Jesus. Right? Let's look at um, Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews 2, verses 3 and 4. Hebrews 2, verses 3 and 4. Okay, Hebrews 2, verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. That's verse 4. Like verse 3, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great a salvation, it was spoken by the Lord and confirmed by the Father. Right. So the Lord came preaching, and he pre preached and taught them. And he's, uh, here it says, God bearing witness. What does bearing witness mean? When you say, uh, yeah, I was a witness to that, what does it mean? When you did something and you're saying, uh, yeah, I, I can I can testify to that, you're giving evidence, right? I was there, this is what happened. So when the Lord ministered, when he preached and when he taught and when he ministered, the Father was bearing witness, meaning he was testifying to the ministry with signs, and wonders and miracles and it says by the gifts of the holy spirit by the power and the gifts of the holy spirit okay so the writer of hebrews is saying this is what it is the lord jesus ministered and the father confirmed it uh he gave evidence to that by the gifts of the spirit by the empowering of the holy spirit okay um one more verse acts 10 and third verse 38 Okay, Acts 10, verse 38. Um, so this is uh, Luke, right? He's um, writing that. Um, the words of Peter, right? How God, okay, Acts 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Okay, so all these verses, you know, in in the Lord Jesus' own words, um, we saw uh, in Luke chapter four, in the words of the writers of Hebrew and, and Acts, we see that everyone recognizes okay, the Lord is doing something, the, the earthly ministry, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so. That is something for us to understand. Okay, so he came to the earth, he walked in sonship glory, and the things that he did, he ministered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now um, let's move on to um, to look at uh, another aspect. Okay, so why is this important? The fact that um, the Lord Jesus did what he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because the Lord Jesus turns around and he asks his followers to do the same thing. 
Right? He says, okay, you go preach the gospel. Right? You go baptize everyone in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You you teach them, you know, teaching them to observe all the things that I have taught you. And this teaching is not just with mere words, but with the power of the Holy Spirit, accompanied with signs, wonders, and miracles. Because he says, okay, you go lay hands on the sick, right? You will cast out demons, and right? you will pray with new tongues. And he says all this, and all that is because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? So, because we might say, God, you know, that was Jesus, and this is me, right? Jesus could do that because he is God. And how can, you know, how can I do it? It's unfair to expect me, uh, a very finite human being, how can he expect me to do that? Like that could be a question, right? How can I do that? But the fact is this, you know, it is not us, it's not our ability, but it's the power of the Holy Spirit who indwells us. Right? So when we say Jesus is our example, you know, we follow him, he's in his footsteps, he's our example. So this is also one of the examples that he ministered by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we, we are saying, Lord, Holy Spirit, you come, you fill us, you change us, and you work in us, you work through us. Right? Very important. Right? Okay, so let's look at uh, some of the verses here, what the Lord Jesus taught. Okay, John chapter 14 and verse 12. John chapter 14 and verse 12. Okay. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Okay. Very challenging words, right? Inspiring words, but very challenging words. Yeah. So he's, he's saying, um, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Right. So it, it puts an end to all that argument, right? Oh, he is Jesus, he is God, and how can he expect me? The Lord himself is saying, okay, the works that I do, you will do also. So he is just, you know, he's giving us the benchmark for ministry. He's giving us a standard for ministry and saying, okay, this is what it is. And he says something, he gives a key, you know, he gives a, the answer there, right there, how he will do that. Okay, so he says that, um, uh, the second part of that verse, he says, greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. Okay, so he's going to the father, he's ascending to the father, and he's saying greater works than these he will do. The works that I do, he will do. Greater works than these, he will do because I go to my Father. And the, the th key is this, because he's going to the Father, he was sending the Comforter. He's sending the Holy Spirit. Okay? You look at the verse uh, before that, uh, verse 12. right? Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes... Uh, sorry, verse 12 is just what we read. Just read the verse after that. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Um, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And verse 16, I pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. And who's this helper? The Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit. Right? So the Lord Jesus is making a very important statement here. And we as believers... You know, this is something that we need to really grasp, take a hold of and say, okay, you know, this is what he did. And every time we read the Gospels and every time we see the Lord Jesus doing some amazing things and wonderful things and ministering, you know, these words should also be something that we remind ourselves of. And the Lord did this. The Lord is saying, okay, you will do these things. He who believes in me will do these things. Right? That we will minister in the same manner. Okay. Okay. Let's look at um, one more verse, uh, a couple of more verses. Right? Um, Luke chapter, the last chapter, Luke, Luke 24, verses 48 and 49. Okay, Luke 24, 48. 
and you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I give you the promise, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Okay, saying you are witnesses of these things. Uh, behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Okay, and you wait there in Jerusalem till you are covered or endued with power from on high. Um, so uh, that, that is that is something he's saying. I send the promise of my Father. Then let's turn to Acts chapter one. Okay, Acts chapter one, verse eight. But you, uh, maybe we should uh, we should just read uh, verse four, right? And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, "You have heard from me." Okay, so he's saying, "Wait, I'll send the promise of the Father." And then verse eight, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Okay, so um, the Lord very simply, you know, is saying that this is what this is what it is um, that I will go, I will send the promise of the Father. Wait in Jerusalem till you are endued with power on high. Okay, so all that goes on to prove that um, uh, the Lord confirming the fact that he did what he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he's looking to his followers and he's saying, you know, this is what you can do. This is what you need to walk in. And because I go to my father. Okay, so any, any doubts, any questions? Any, any, any doubts here? No doubts at all? Affirming it's true, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, Nina. Uh, anyone uh, online class, classroom? Any any questions? Anything that you might want to share, add? Okay. See, this is a very important aspect of um, the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, why he is there with us, um, and and that scripture that we read, you know, he has, uh, he anointed Jesus to do these things, right? Um, to share, preach the gospel, to um, open the eyes of the blind, to set the captives free. The ministry of the Lord Jesus, and the Lord is looking to his people looking to the followers, looking to the disciples and saying, okay, this is what they will do also. Okay, right. Okay, so uh, I'm sure as uh, first year um, students, we're also learning about our identity, right? Okay, so who we are in Christ, okay? So what is that one thing that you can tell me about identity, what you've learned? Okay, we'll start with charisma. What and what comes to your mind uh, from your ident in Christ class? Yeah. You are what chosen, purchased by God. Okay. Okay, that stands out to you. Okay, anyone else? I, I forget your name. Uh, next to Nina. Sorry, Valencia. Okay, Valencia for you. What is it? Set apart. Okay, in Christ. Mm. So when you when you say set apart, it's like you know taking this like water bottles, setting it apart. Okay, um, so it's it's taken set separately for a particular pers purpose. And um, uh, and also, you know, it's set apart from from something for something, right? So, so you know, okay, I'm set apart from the world, the things of the world, but I'm also set apart for something, for a purpose. Right? Okay, things like that. Anyone? Chirag, maybe. 
¿Ah? Sorry. We are his children, okay? We are sons and daughters of God. Yeah. So we have been born again by the Spirit of God, by the Word of God. So we are his children. We are in the family of God. So many things, right? When we say children, uh, family of God, we are heirs of God. We have an inheritance. All those things are there. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me look here. Um, to be more like Jesus, called and set apart to reflect and be like Jesus in everyday life. Born again. Now we are a new creation. Yeah. Um, I just come back to Nina's comment um, uh, in a little while. Okay, we are made righteous by Him. Yeah, absolutely, right. So, call and set about reflect and be like Him. Yeah, in everyday life. So that is part of our identity. You know, some of those things, but this is also part of our identity. What are we talking about? The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, to do those things that Christ has called us to do. Right? That is also part of our identity as, as new creations, as disciples. Okay. So I think, um, yeah, Nina, you made a comment about um, have you been reconciled, redeemed, made righteous. Awesome. Uh, I'm just looking at the comment that you said. This was in connection with witness. Uh, I, I guess you're referring to the, um, the anointing, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and uh, uh, referring to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, right? It says that um, you'll receive power and you shall be witnesses. Yes, absolutely. So that's the primary objective that, uh, you know, when we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, uh, to be witnesses. But it also says to be witnesses with power, you know, to receive the power to be witnesses. And how did the Lord, um, you know, testify or witness um, about what was to come and how did he minister? Right. so we are baptized, we are anointed by him to be witnesses, to, to do so in the same manner that he did. So that is the thing that we are filled with power to do that. We are not powerless to do that. Of course, power talks about transformed lives. Power talks about you know addictions, chains, uh, you know everything being broken. But it also talks about ministering the way he did. So it talks about Christ likeness, but it also talks about ministering the way he did. You know, ministering with power. So good observation. Thank you. Um, okay. So so this is something that we need to uh, you know we need to understand. We need to be we need to get comfortable with. Okay, uh, every time we see in the Gospels, every time we see the ministry of the Lord, to say, Lord, you've called me for this. Okay, so let's look at, um, um, so we looked at Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, right? And we see that um, because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you know, the Lord Jesus is saying that um, you can do, you know, as believers, as disciples, you can do the things. So for us, that is a standard for ministry. That is a standard for a normal Christian life. Okay, now I'm sure that uh, you know when we studied about in Christ identity, you know you were challenged, right? Uh, in what way? Right? Because you read that and it's saying you are a new creation in Christ, and right? you are a new creation. You are born again, no more uh, of unrighteousness, but you are clothed with righteousness and righteousness of God in Christ is what you're clothed with. Right? You've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. So, you know, we, we see all and we are challenged by that. Challenged to renew our mind to conform to the truth. So also, you know, when we look at this truth, we see that we are challenged again. Okay, no more excuses, right? We are challenged, inspired to renew our mind to this truth. This is the truth, to renew our mind to the truth, right? So, this, so the thing to do is say, yes, yes, Lord. You know, I haven't experienced this uh, so far. I haven't seen it, or maybe we have, you know, but to say, yes, Lord, uh, I, I receive this, right? I receive this, I accept this, and I invite this. I just want to walk the way you did. Right? So in, many times when we say, I want to be like Jesus, we're talking about character. You know, I want to be like him in love. I want to be like him in compassion. I want to be like him in forgiveness. Right? I want to be like him. Christ-like, absolutely right. We need to be. But Christ-likeness 
involves character and gifting. Never forget that. Right? Two aspects, right? Power and character. Gifting and character. It's not a bad word. Power is not a bad word. You know, uh, gifting is not a bad word. Right? It becomes uh, it becomes skewed or it becomes biased only when we do not consider the character, which is the vessel. Right? So Christ likeness involves both. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's look at um, now. We're going to look at some of the teachings of the uh, of the Lord when He taught about the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, what did He speak about the Holy Spirit? Okay. So we're we're talking. We're we're just learning about the Holy Spirit. We've looked at several things. Right. What the Holy Spirit did in the Old Testament. What He did in the New Testament. What He did in the life of Jesus. And now we've come to the place where what come to the place where we learn about what. Did the Lord Jesus talk about specifically about the Holy Spirit? Okay. Okay. So let's look at a few verses here. Matthew 10 and verse 20. Okay. Matthew chapter 10 and uh, verse 20. Okay. What does it say? Can anyone read out? Yeah, it is not who you speak, but the spirit of the Father who speaks in you. And why did he say that? And in what situation did he say that? Right? He's uh, sending out his disciples and he's saying, I'm sending you into a very hostile environment. Right? I'm sending you into a difficult place. Right? So I'm sending you as sheep among wolves. Right? It's hostile. People are going to be against you. People are going to be, you know, putting you in prison. You know, if you read that verse, uh, verses before that, verse 16 onwards, he says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. So what he's saying is this, you know, when if you need to defend yourself, if you need to, uh, and before that he's saying, you will be witnesses in all these places. You know, if you look at the life of Paul, he was a witness to kings and governors, right? Because he was persecuted for his faith. But in the very uh, place where he was taken, he was taken before kings and governors, he was a witness. He testified about Jesus, right? And, um, and he's, uh, Jesus saying, you know, it's, it's by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give you the words to speak in those moments, and uh, you will testify. Okay, let's look at uh, Mark 13. Okay, so we're looking at uh, the words of the Lord Jesus and uh, what he's teaching. Again, they when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak. But whatever is given to you in that hour, speak that, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. So something important that we learn here that this Holy Spirit enables you to testify, enables you to talk about Jesus, enables you to witness. Okay, and it's a it's not a comfortable place to witness. It's not like everybody is waiting to hear. It's not like somebody introduce you and say, "Okay, now brother so and so, sister so and so will now share the testimony." It's not like that. It's like saying, "Why did you talk about Jesus? Why are you doing the things that you're doing?" They're accusing. Right? You are creating a problem. You are a troublemaker. And in that scenario, the person is saying, okay, this is why I'm doing or I'm living the kind of life I'm living. Okay, And here, the Lord is saying, it will be given to you. Okay, What you should speak, the Holy Spirit will teach you. Right. So it's, it's something wonderful. The Holy Spirit will teach us. He will show us. He will give us the words to speak. Okay, so we are speaking as inspired by the Holy 
spirit right when we are test when we are being witnesses with power we are speaking as inspired by the holy spirit so each of us as believers have this privilege okay then the lord jesus also talked about the blasphemy against the holy spirit okay so we we studied that and um, in what context did he say that he cast out that that spirit which was which was actually residing in that person uh, causing blindness causing uh, dumbness right the person could not speak the person could not see because of the condition created by the this evil spirit so the lord lord cast it out and after that everybody what did they what did everyone say what did they say you remember that what did they say yeah you are casting out demons because of Beelzebub, who's actually giving you the power and the authority to cast out right so the lord jesus uh, you know refuted that you know he said i cast out by the finger of god or by the power of the holy spirit okay and then he said you know about this every kind of a sin will be forgiven but the blasphemy against the holy spirit will not be forgiven i think we we looked at that in the earlier class and we said that um yeah it blasphemy is against the holy spirit why is it so you know why is it the unforgivable sin because people knowing that it's it's a power of god people knowing the works of god uh because they don't want to give up their pride give up their position they're saying that this is a work of a demon attributing the work of god to work of a, a demon you know that's the blasphemy against the holy spirit right okay we'll take a break and then we'll come back in 10 minutes Thank you.